a walkthrough of the current Airbus product portfolio. The key to the aviation giants is not only do they offer one aircraft, but a whole family of aircraft serving airlines short to long range. Starting small in the 100 to 150 seater small single hours, Airbus used to offer only A319 Neo, seating up to 152 class to 3700 nautical miles. It sold badly. The A319 is a shrink of A320 with the same wings and engines, making it de optimized with almost the same trip costs but far fewer seats, raising the seat cost and limiting profitability. C Series was finally purchased 75% Airbus in 2020, giving Airbus the A220 to play with in the 100 to 150 seat market. A220 was designed from the ground up to be the most optimized in this market. Smaller sized, but with an all new airframe and avionics, nothing comes close in efficiency. A220-100 carries 122 class and 135 one class to 3450 nautical miles. The Dash 300 with higher takeoff weight by 6 tons carries 120 to 152 class or 160 max while keeping the range at 3350 nautical miles. It's the more optimized of the two, making most use of the wing. A220-300 actually intercepts the A319neo in capacity and range, but is the more efficient aircraft by 4%. So why continue to offer both? Well, some airlines may operate A320 only fleets, and for them, the A319 is part of the A320 family, which means same pilots and crew operate them all with common type ratings. This means lower pilot training and maintenance costs. Airbus is in the position to offer both A319neo with excellent hot weather performance and commonality and the newest, most efficient market opening A220-300. Not a bad position to be in given the forecasted demand is for over 5,000 aircraft. Moving up to the larger single out, the A320neo. Carrying 165 passengers 2 class and 189 1 class to 3,500 nautical miles for 165 passengers, it sits well in this market of potentially 15,000 or more airplanes over 20 years. Final member of the A320 family though, now falls within what Airbus calls the new medium market segment, a market segment between the hugely capable white bodies and short range single hours. The A321neo, but not just A321neo, but A321neo family, with the XLR. The LR has actually been combined into A321neo, with the XLR being the new longest range version. Standard A321neo carries 206 2 class and 241 class to 4000 nautical miles. The XLR, with the higher takeoff weight to 101 ton, a modified gear, new intermediate flap settings, a permanent new rear fuel tank carries the same 206 passengers to 4,700 nautical miles with the Airbus fuel reserve for single hour. Airbus believes this is their perfect 757 replacement and their middle of the market airplane, with higher capacity than the A320neo and more range, but less seats and way less range than the white bodies. Airbus believes this market segment is best served by upgraded larger single hours going further distances and the lower end white bodies becoming more efficient with better operating economics rather than simply putting one product straight in the middle. Their idea is that for operating these new point-to-point -point skinny routes, airlines can start with single hours, say the XLR, to test the demand of the market. 
Should there be demand, they can then upgrade to larger white bodies, say the A330 NEO. Should it fail though, the Singular can be reversed back into just another domestic A320 family aircraft and the white body can be deployed on other longer haul routes. This versatility is not afforded by just one product. Let's talk about the A330neo and how Airbus sees it bridging the gap between the Singular A321 and larger white bodies. The A330neo is an upgraded A330 like for like, with new A350 styled skimmer winglets with an extended wingspan, new 11% more efficient Rolls-Royce Trent 7000 engines, and a new cabin for more seats, amongst other improvements such as higher takeoff weights of 251 tons. A330 was initially built to fly short-haul routes, but Airbus upgraded it to become an aircraft hugely efficient on the short-medium-haul regional routes, but also available to fly long-haul ones. The Dash 800 is the shorter of the two, carrying 257 passengers 3 class to 8,150 nautical miles. The Dash 900 is more optimized, with 306 passengers to 7,200 nautical miles. The Dash 800 is better suited in capacity to fill the upper end of the medium-sized segment with the right number of seats, but suffers from too much unnecessary range, as it's a simple shrink of the larger Dash 900 with the same wings, engines, takeoff weight. It has nearly identical trip costs as the larger Dash 900, but without the additional seats, it suffers in seat mile cost, and in my view, is too inefficient to serve new point-to-point -point lower demand medium haul routes. The larger Dash 900 is more efficient than competing 787-9 on shorter routes but could be too large to serve this medium-sized market segment. Airbus COO believes the A321 XLR with 240 seats one class has the same seat cost on longer routes as the A330-900 with 306 seats, while the A330 NEO then grows the market up to 460. As I see it, the A330neo is still the closest 767 replacement out there in the upper end of this market segment, but is still too large to serve this segment. But that's what Airbus really wants, stating in the future, more airlines will deploy the A330neo, usually used for longer routes on shorter routes very efficiently, when demand for these routes exceed what's available on a single hour. A330neo also fills in the medium-sized white-body market and is Airbus's Dreamliner competitor, not the A350, which is fundamentally a larger aircraft. And lastly, the largest of the large white bodies, the A350 family. The A350-900 carrying 325, 3 class to 8,100 nautical miles, and the larger Dash 1000 carrying 369, 3 class to 8,700 nautical miles by 2022. These two may feature the same pilot type ratings, similar fuselage cross section, and general designs, but have some significant differences between them. The Dash 900 has two Rolls Royce Trent XWB. 84 engines with 84,000 pounds of thrust each and a 4 wheel bogey with a max takeoff weight of 280 tons. larger, heavier Dash 1000 has two Rolls-Royce Trent XWB97 engines, with 97,000 pounds of thrust each, and a 6-wheel bogey for a higher takeoff weight of 318 tons by 2022. The Dash 1000 is available with additional fuel tanks in its larger cargo holds. Dash 1000 has an extended wing trailing edge with 4% more wing area to maintain the same landing speeds, though slightly worsening the fuel burn performance. In terms of market positioning, it's complicated 
limited again. The A350-900 is a large white body and competes with the higher end of the 787 family, more specifically the Dash 10 in capacity and the lower end of the 777 market. The larger Dash 1000 is competing against the larger 777s, including the new 777-9. When Airbus launched the A350, the smallest Dash 800 was supposed to compete with 787-9, though Airbus dropped that model when it became clear it was too heavy. The A330neo took its place as the medium-sized white body, while the larger A350-900 and 1000 were targeted at the 777-200 and 300ER at the time. When it became clear the Dash 1000 could fly the same routes as 777-300ER but was 25% more efficient, Boeing upgraded the 777 to become 777X, adding 30 to 40 more seats across both the Dash 200 and Dash 300ER to become the Dash 8 and Dash 9. This was in order to match the lower seat cost of A350, given the heavy 777 couldn't match the trip cost of the lighter composite A350. Thus, the A350 now competes against the 777X without the additional seats, and at a time when efficiency not additional seats is important, the A350 in my view will outsell the 777X and is the perfect large white body and 777 replacement going into the 2030s. So there we are, the entire Airbus product portfolio going to the future. Airbus believes it has the most efficient and best position lineup, and in the meantime, it will continue to push technology forward with the true next generation of single outs with true new propulsion. Thanks for tuning in and till we meet next time, one team, one aviation, one sky ahead.